8th through May 1st in Hollywood. For more information, visit tcm.com slash festival. Hi, I'm Robert Osborne. Thanks so much for joining us. We're very pleased to be able to bring you the double feature that we have coming up next. Both films directed by the man sitting to my right, Jack Garfine. Welcome, Jack. Hi. Good to have you here. Nice to see you. Robert. Thank you. Now, Jack has a very interesting history in Hollywood. He's a terrific director with many plays to his credit, and he's earned great respect for these next two films that we're going to show. But they are the only two films Jack has made. We're going to be talking to him about that. We're going to start with the first film Jack made. It's from 1957. It's based on an off-Broadway play he directed called End as a Man. The title of the movie version changed to The Strange One. So Jack, about yeah. this movie. I remember when it came out. It's a terrific movie. But a lot of people didn't see it. Why? Why well, was that? What happened was there was no ending to the film, Robert. So we were going to shoot in Florida. I went down to Florida and I saw a train coming in at night, came from the south. The Jim Crow laws were still on. Right. I looked in the train, and there were black people sleeping in the, on the aisles, babies with women. And I thought, my god. Of course, it reminded me of my own life, the deportations in Europe. But I looked at that, and I thought, well, this is where Jocko should be thrown on this train, mm -hmm. on a train like that. So I called the producer, Spiegel. And he Sam owned, Spiegel. Sam Spiegel. And he was, he said, thrilling. Oh, Jack, what a great idea. My God, wonderful. We'll arrange it. So then I come back to New York, and he told Harry Cohen that what we were doing, or Harry Cohen read the ending. Harry Cohen, what? Blacks in a movie? We're not going to have distribution in the South. The blacks have to go. So Sam Spiegel called me, and he said, listen, the head of the studio, he doesn't want it. He feels not going to sell. I have to cut the blacks out. Wow. I said to him, you're asking an Auschwitz survivor to cut blacks out of a film, Sam? I can't do it. So he arranged for the night when we were shooting the scene to have people watch to make sure there were no, no, nobody's around. And he came <laughs> in a black long limousine and parked outside because the assistant director said to me, can you do it with two or three blacks? I said, absolutely. I'll hide them in the bushes, Jack. And then when you're ready to shoot, I'm going to put them on the train. We shot the scene. He wanted me to reshoot it. I wouldn't do it. As a consequence, my contract was canceled at Columbia. So you're fighting the system. Yeah. So yeah. How could I live right. have, if I had done that, you know? So, Were you pleased with what did end up on the screen? I was thrilled with the performances because mm -hmm. in, a, in a sense, you know, when I started this project, I was 22 years old in the actor's studio, you know, and I took all these unknown actors. Ben Gazzara was a telephone operator for the New York Times. Uh, Pat Hingle, at a I was a package boy right. at the Beacon Hotel. And we would meet, you know, after work, like, and we would rehearse from 9.30 to about midnight. One night, Robert. It's what New York was not as dangerous then as it was later. We hear footsteps coming. We were on the seventh floor of the Anta building. So we hear footsteps coming up. Jimmy Dean, that was James Dean right. first in the studio. Jimmy Dean grabbed a chair, got to one side of the door. Pat Hingle grabbed another one, right? Ben was in the back. The door opened, and it's Ilya Kazan. And he walked in, and he said, what are you guys doing here? And I introduced myself. I'm a director. That's how he first met James Dean, Ben Gazzara. He said, I was walking down Broadway. I saw the lights up on the seventh floor. I wondered what was going on. I said, we're working on a project. We all have part-time jobs, but we're doing that at night. Kazan said, all I can tell you is you guys walk up seven flights. After you have a part-time job, all of you 
will make a major contribution to films of the theater. So James Dean was in the cast of the yes, Off-Broadway show? Yes, James Dean. There was and a... Spiegel, didn't Spiegel kind of want James no, Dean for yeah, the film? No, yeah, at one point, when the film came up, Jimmy Dean, who was very close to me as well, he called Spiegel, and he said, I know Jack is not going to want to go along with this, but I want to tell you something. I'm as good, if not better, for the part, you know. So Spiegel said, what's the matter with you? I said, wait a minute. I worked with... What's the matter with you for not jumping and taking James Dean? Yeah, of course. Right. I said, listen, I worked on this with this actor for all these months, and he's giving an astonishing... You know, Kenneth Tynan, the critic, said, he said, it was the greatest anti-hero created since World War II, you know. And so uh, I said, no. And by the way, Ben didn't know the story until a couple of years ago, uh -huh. you know. Well, let's look at the film, Jack. Okay, sure. Here it is, from 1957, based on the novel by Calder Willingham and directed by my guest, Jack Garfine. Here's The Strange One. <laughs> 